to take you all on a little course through time and talk about a specific genre of music to me that is just not really in existence anymore as it was all those years ago. It is the world of punk, punk rock. The punk genre has been going on for so long. I believe from like the late 50s up into the 70s is where it really picked up. Especially in like the mid to late 70s in the UK territories, punk was where it's at. It, the genre was all about being different. It was all about going against the machine, going against the course of the government, the political bullshit that was transpiring, the beliefs, the society, the system. It was all about speaking up for those who, if you see like a random couple just walking down the street who are not happy with the situation that they are currently living, you had a particular band, an image, writing down the words, taking all the backgrounds of all the shit that was being showcased on television, being written into music and speaking for others who couldn't be able to speak for them. So when it come to, came to the lyrics, that's what it was all about. Having logic, believability, understanding, and saying, fuck you. That's what the lyrics was all about. But when it came to music, it was loud, it was raunchy, it was edgy, and it, it was fantastic. The presentation alone, it didn't matter if you were able to play or not. It didn't matter if you had the talents or if you couldn't even hold a particular note or able to sing the words. If you had an image and the people fucking loved you for what you were doing and you were able to at least keep a simple beat, beat together on stage, you were fucking making it. In the world of punk music, there's been many great bands that came out throughout this time period. There's the Buzzcocks, New York Dolls, the Stooges, uh, Susie and the Banshees, ba Bad Brains, X-Ray Spec, Dead Boys. Uh, did I say Black Flag? Well, if I'm not, I'll say it again. The Clash and the Ramones are two of the biggest names that you can think of is those two. You had Joy Division, Television, Talking Heads in the early years, The Jam, Stiff Little Fingers, The Stranglers. Motherfucker, I can give you so many different bands out there in the world of punk music that were extremely influential, whether they were well-known or underground. The Undertones, The Adverts, X, Generation X, Billy Idol's group before he went solo. I can go fucking on. Even in the new wave genre, there were bands that actually started off as punk. Because the thing is that in the world of music, you need a start somewhere in a specific genre. Whether you're doing like raw edgy synthesizers or if you're doing like something completely bland and boring. Things that you always have to find a start somewhere for you, for you in order to grow. Whether if you are a solo artist or you are a band. I'll give you a couple ones right now that start off as punk bands and end up growing, whether if they change their sound up or discover it into a particular genre that they absolutely love. Here's a couple right now. Again, Generation X, when Billy Idol started off, he, can, he kept his punk image, but he progressed on into his sound and changed up his stuff. He stayed true to his original format, but... He became something afterwards while adding the experimental value. Look at Devo. They didn't have that punk look, but they had their own image because it was all about creativity for them. XTC is another group that started off with a punk sound and progressed further. But despite all that, I digress here. Despite all that, the band that I can say right now that was one of the biggest ones that people know, they only released one record. In their span of how long the band was together. Everybody knows who they are. When you say the name The Sex Pistols. You know who the fuck I'm talking about. John Lydon. The front man of The Sex Pistols. The band went on for about four years. So four or five years. Wasn't very long. The Sex Pistols started off. Within everything that I just stated. In terms of the lyrics. The presentation. The way that they performed live. But the thing is, is that Johnny Rotten, John Lydon, he was a serious performer. He obviously stayed true to his lyrics of all the material that he had wrote for the Sex Pistols. Now, when it came to the group alone, everybody knows the, the one and only album that they released in 1977. Never mind the Bullocks. Here's the Sex Pistols. 
some of the most notorious songs everybody knows from the particular record. Pretty Vacant, Holidays in the Sun, God Save the Queen, and the song that everybody knows that you hear on the radio that just practically sums up the whole message of what Johnny Rotten was trying to do was Anarchy in the UK. That's like the only, that's like the song that you can summarize the Sex Pistols in one particular tune. Between that and God Save the Queen, I personally choose that song. But again, I'm going to digress here. So the Sex Pistols started off with a, with a couple friends getting together, wanting to create music. But then here came the one guy we're going to talk about, Sid Vicious. John Simon Ritchie, or Sidney is what people like to call him, Sid Vicious. Now, if you go on, because there are audio clips out there of Sid playing the bass, and where it's not even if it's a live performance, and my, my fucking microphone just fell. It's not even if it's a live performance or anything, where he's like backstage practicing or whatever. You can listen to him playing the bass. You can obviously tell he was not good. He's, uh, he's pretty much known as the greatest worst bass player who ever lived. But the thing is, is that, it's like I said before, it didn't matter if you had the talent or if you couldn't even hold the lick. Despite how the band felt and what was going on stage, the thing is, is that, objectively, from how I'm going to describe him when visually and looking at it, well, obviously he was terrible. He couldn't play, he couldn't sing. But the thing is, is that, the thing I can't take away from Sid Vicious is this. He had an image. He had everything of what stood out to be a punk. The rebellious, obnoxious, and I'm saying that in a good way. The attitude that he carried on. That's what made him so well known, is that he had his own image. He said, fuck you. He was out there having fun. But the thing is, is that when it comes to having fun, it comes with great responsibilities. Now, after when Sex Pistols, uh, Sex Pistols, when Sid Vicious was out of the Sex Pistols, he tried his solo career and that failed. He even formed his own group called Vicious White Kids. And you want to know how that band turned out? Yeah, it didn't turn out so good. Because the thing is that it happened at the Electric Ballroom in 1978. And the thing is, is that this was only a one-time program. Sid Vicious performed a lot of cover songs from different folks from the 1950s up into the 60s. I'm not. I don't. Even, I gotta listen to the thing again if they did some of their own stuff. But did mostly cover songs. I know Sid Vicious did his own cover of "My Way," and he did "Come On Everybody" by Eddie Cochran as well. But Sid Vicious, though, it's like I said, when it comes with having fun, also involves great responsibility. Now, he all she he had a girlfriend that he absolutely loved and cherished. There was a lot of commotion between the two. There was love. There was hatred. There was, whether if it was, you know, something physical or mental, whatever the case may be, is that the communication, anything that involved between the two is, is that they try to make the relationship work. But the thing is, is that they were both young. They were both going through phases and they were both controversial when it came to how they came off and how they were interacting. I remember John Lydon spoke in a couple interviews that, how he felt and that he did regret bringing Sid into the Sex Pistols. Now, back to Johnny Rotten for a moment. He did leave the Sex Pistols and he did progress on into doing bigger and better things. Public Image LTD, or PIL, was known as the short term for the particular group. Now, they progressed on, he started doing more experimental in the world of music, changed up his sound, his mood, kept the image, but he changed a lot of things up in, when it came to the music. And he did some pretty good stuff with uh, Pill. But back to Sid Vicious. The movie Sid and Nancy. Alex Cox was the one who directed this. And you had guys like Gary Oldman and you had Chloe Webb both playing both as Sid and Nancy. Now, Gary Oldman, when he started off in the world of movies, I believe this was either his second or third movie because the thing is that he was green in the world of films. And later on in the 90s, he came off and he started to do bigger and better things. But this was one of those films where you can see he was green, but this is where the beginning elements of him performing as an actor came into play. Now, when it came to his pr presence as Sid Vicious, 
He had the, he obviously had the look. He had the mannerisms. He even portrayed. Hell, he even covered songs that Sid Vicious even covered himself. So basically, he covered a cover. He did my way. He did I Want to Be Your Dog. Two songs I can think of that was featured in the movie that he did cover. The presentation, the mannerisms, the way he was singing it. Because the way how it was all slur and all sloppy and everything. That's how Sid did it. Trying to have the voice. Gary Holman was able to rectify and represent that so well. Because he brought them that inside look of how he was when it came to performing. Gary Oldman did a fantastic job, not just when it came to the on-stage performance, but even playing the bass itself sloppy, have the actual bass that Sid play, not the real one, but the same Fender that Sid did play. Hell, the representation where Sid had the fucking uh, busted nose that he had where he got punched in the face. That was even showcased a little bit in the film. I really respect the movie that they were able to stay to a lot of things whether if it was accurate or not, they were able to stay true towards the person. Same with uh, Chloe Webb as Nancy. Sp uh, as, uh, Nancy. I'm not going to say the last name, though, because I'll probably butcher it, but I'm just going to refer to her as Nancy. Even the, how she performed as her was was just believe was good. And it was obviously believable because it just gives you that visual presence that this is how they were behaving. The thing is, is that the members of... The Sex Pistols, John Lydon in particular, the way he was observing how these two would be acting, you know, acting all immature and everything that they need to get their act together. John obviously got pissed, but the thing is, is that he cared about his friend. He cared about Sid, he wanted to get his act together. It was either dump Sid and continue on with the move or continue being in a rut. He had a, it was either one or the other in the, that was going on in the movie, so that's what happened. Sex Pistols progressed, and what did Sid do? Like I said, he went to Soul, which ended up being a failure. But when it came to the connection itself between how these two got together, it was something to, It was something that wasn't surprising with how two young kids get together, want to go out, have fun, eat pizza, or drink beer, or do the war, do the unthinkable shit like heroin, which is something that these two did a lot. Because the thing is, is that this is the word, this is the part right here where in the film where it started to re it's really felt sad because the thing is Sid and Chloe were both young they were both rebellious now John he was young too but he wanted them to mature and get better but Sid didn't want but Sid chose not to he wanted to continue on living as the rebellious punk that he was as the years were progressing. And he was still doing the drugs. He was partying, doing different things, living exactly of how it was. The thing is, is that in the late seventies, it was going into the new realm of music. Things were changing up a little bit, whether it was the punk genre or something new. And it really amazes me how they were able to really take the take those and just showcase that in the film. I felt sad watching this movie. I felt heart wrenched for the behavior I felt a lot of things going on in this film that was just really bringing that believability that really just wanted to take me in back into that time just sitting here picturing it of okay seeing how this young kid is you want him to get better or become a bass player better bass player how actually legitimately learning and taking lessons for him to grow and become somebody as a performer specifically so, that was a lot of things going on in this movie that I just really couldn't even help but just admire, but at the same time, felt sad about. The, the film had a great balance between both the music, the relationship, the ins and outs, the pros and cons of maintaining it, between both the world of music and the band itself. Everyone did, a, did their job playing in the film. Especially bringing in different political values of what was going on during that time of what the punk genre was symbolizing. Seeing that little visual presentation was really good. Hell, if you even went on a fucking YouTube to look it up, you'll get the idea. But if you watch a movie where they actually take 
the ideal pro the ideal premises uh, the ideal premises of all the shit that was happening and they were able to take that and turn it into something believable something of a real life situation and believing it into a movie standard of giving you all exactly that this is shit that was going down it was just it was just odd so Sid and Nancy it's like I said while watching this movie I was very fascinated with the whole entire story itself Going into a deep dive within the relationship, the ins and outs. Gary Oldman did a did a really good job playing as Sid Vicious. Chloe Webb did a superb job playing as Nancy. And um, I don't know who the one actor's name was who played as Johnny Rotten. His I was mostly focusing on his particular role because the thing is, is that the way he came off, he had the mannerisms, he had the look, he had the logical elements of what John Lydon has as a human being. Uh, speak, staying true to himself, being honest, speaking uh, logic, and not giving a shit of what others say, believing in himself, musically and figuratively. So the supporting roles were something I really paid attention to a lot because I thought those were just very... I was actually more invested with those than it is with the actual main thing, but that's my own inner thought, not towards my actual summarized perspective on the film itself so to sum it up this was a very good movie it was emotional it was very heart-wrenching it focused on two different things it had real good performances and i have to give this film a four out of five there were times in the film i had to give a negative there were times in the film to where i thought chloe webb with her performance was a little bit too obnoxious and to where there were certain parts of the film to, that really felt like that this wasn't behavior that I don't think Nancy really was. You know, screaming and yelling, throwing temper tantrum fits. I can understand if it's between a couple, but just doing it out of the blue, it sure as hell just didn't really feel like that happened. So, Sid and Nancy was one of those films that I just really admired. Especially, like I said, Gary Oldman's performance. It was real good. And I have to give much more respects to John Lydon more, not only as a human being, but mostly when it comes to the music world. And his early work with the Sex Pistols, how he got out of that and went to do a public image LTD. It was something. So, with that being said, folks, that is my little review of Sid and Nancy. Real good movie. I highly recommend you folks check this out. And if you want to increase your world and know a little more detail about the Sex Pistols, go ahead and actually give the record itself itself a listen to. Uh, never mind the bollocks. Here comes the Sex Pistols. Give that record a listen because it's very controversial, but it's a great album and goes against everything of all this shit that I was talking about. If you listen to the lyrics, listen to the sound, it's a, his, you can say a historic piece of work and an important album. Not just in music in general, but in the world of punk. So, definitely give the al album a listen to. I also suggest Public Image LTD give their music a little bit more of a look at to uh, understand what John Lyon wanted to do. And most of all, if you want to get a visual presentation of Sid Vicious Story, with his girlfriend Nancy, give this movie a little bit of a go. It's definitely all well worth watching. So, for that being said, uh, ciao for now.